YouTube. Jeff, you know what makes me 100% angry? Would it be all the stupid remakes of classic 80s slasher flicks that makes you? Because that's, that's where I'm at. I had to watch this episode three times. <laughs> I watched it for the recording of the Brent Watches video. Uh huh. And I had to watch it in agonizing, slow painfulness for the edit of the Brent Watches video. And then I was at the premiere of the Brent Watches video. I had to watch it. I didn't watch it anymore after that, but I had to watch it three times. Not a fan. Spoiler alert, folks. Spoiler alert. Jeff, I don't know how you feel about this episode. Um, there's a, there is a pattern we have here at Babylon five for the very first time, which <laughs> has been a carryover for me from when I was doing beam me up a star Trek podcast. Yeah. Which is every time you come on and you go, you know what? This is going to be one of our shorter episodes. <laughs> and then those turn into your longest episodes. I guarantee you, I am, I am making a money back guarantee. This is going to be our shortest episode ever. We'll see. And I'll tell you what, I'll tell you why I say that. So some behind the scenes stuff for the, for our YouTube viewers out there. Mm-hmm. We share two, maybe three emails, comments, reviews, you know, stuff like that at the beginning of each episode. Mm -hmm. We get a lot more than that mm -hmm. that happens. So I've got a backlog of them that I've got queued up to plug into the Are episode. Are you going to, is this just going to be like an email episode? Because that's going to be, a, guys, Jeff's in control of this. So if you don't like it, send that email to Jeff at Babylon 5 first at gmail.com. That's five, the number five in the word first. And right. Talk to him about it. It's not going to be all emails, but I do have some reviews that are not short. Uh, some very, very verbose and good reviews. I like them. They're they're great. They're fun. But um, I figured this would be the episode to, to plug them into. <laughs> well, just remember our rule. If you're bored saying it, the folks out there are bored listening to it. Just check yourself. But Jeff, I trust you. I'm well, in no your hands. Bored. These episode. are these are reviews right and that's yes. what we say at the end of every podcast if you leave us a rating review we'll read it here on the podcast and that's what i'm going to do i've been held in especially to the first one i'm going to do i've held on for almost a month um just because it is it is almost a full page feel free to edit on the fly hey can i point something out before we get started yeah i'm i'm really excited about this my big old head is blocking it so i've got to figure out how everything's done oh, but i got yeah. a new i got a new set piece yeah right show it off here. this is this it is, is incredible uh, I'm not going to pull it out, but it's this right here. This is a, a, a Babylon five action figure. This is Ivanova signed by Claudia Christensen. I'm so so cool. Yeah. It's so awesome. I'm so sad. It's, it's cool. So I'm going to, I'm going to have to, uh, is that going to be a giveaway piece? What? No, no, I'm keeping that one. <laughs> I'm Hey, Hey, I know what we're doing for our giveaway. Should we spoil oh, yeah? it? Should I, should, should I tell people? We're just over halfway through the season. You ready to spoil you, this one? Yeah. So do you, do you remember our friend Wash? Oh, who, yeah. Wash he, he did the 3D printed uh, Babylon 5 station for us. Yeah. For the first season. Yeah. 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 He made 3D printed Star Furies. Oh, what? To me. oh. We're going to give away Star Furies. He sent me more than one. We're going to have, we're not just doing oh. a giveaway. We're going to do multiple giveaways. This is going to be awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. Dude, Wash yeah. is incredible. And, I and, love that guy. And let me tell you how cool Wash is. He saw how mad I was and how disappointed I was about uh, having to give away the last Babylon 5. He sent me it, one. He sent me one. Cool. That's Wash so is an cool. awesome dude. Absolutely awesome dude. What's up, Wash, if you're watching? So, anyway. Well, hey. We are four minutes, 20 seconds in. What do you say we try and clock this one out before we get 10? Let's get it. Shortest <laughs> episode ever. Let's go. It won't be to 10, but let's do it. First time. You're new here, huh? Someday, somewhere, I'll make a difference. It's a mockery. I mean, we're not some, some deep space franchise. This station is about something. The year is 2023. The name of the podcast, Babylon 5, for the first time. Welcome 
to Babylon 5 for the first time, not a Star Trek podcast. My name is Jeff Aiken, and I'm watching Babylon 5 for the first time. And I'm Brent Allen, and I'm also watching Babylon 5 for the first time. My good sir, Brent, do you have a problem with this episode? Why are you speaking so? Listen, Jeff, this is going to be a shortish episode. I'm just trying to pad for some time, man. Pad for some time because wowzer. We're going to get into all of that. Uh, Jeff and I, folks out there, Jeff and I are watching Babylon 5 for the very first time. We are two veteran Star Trek podcasters. We each have our own individual Star Trek podcast. We came together to watch this show for the first time and apply that Star Trek uh analytical lens that we have where we overanalyze everything we're going to apply that here to babylon 5 um and also we're going to try to see how much we like this series how's babylon 5 doing it in its own way and while this is a babylon 5 podcast not a star trek one we are star trek podcasters like brent just said so those references are sure to make their way in but to keep us honest we play the rule of three it's a game where we each get only up to three episodes a piece per episode. That's it. Three. One of those three. No substitutions, exchanges, a refund. <laughs> hey, Brent. Hey, Jeff. We have a five star review. Oh, yes. This is from Apple Podcasts. Alexander Boehm left this one. What's up, Alex? Alexander says, my favorite Star Trek veteran non Star Trek podcast. Combining <laughs> Wait, read that again. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is about as niche as you can get. My favorite Star Trek veteran, non-Trek Star Trek podcast. Okay, got it. Yeah, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Says, combining Babylon 5 and Star Trek is something of a taboo in many fan groups. When it's done, the topic is usually who stole from who and not much else. Babylon 5 for the first time shows how much we've been missing out on. I'm happy to say there are many Babylon 5 podcasts out there. Old fans returning to Babylon 5, newcomers being introduced to the show, experts talking about the behind the scenes. There's even a group role-playing the old Babylon 5 RPGs. So with all these options, what makes Babylon 5 for the first time unique? The experience and unbridled optimism of two Star Trek podcasting veterans. As much fun as it is to see people experience this extraordinary show for the first time, there's always a bit of worry. Will they stick with the show or end it halfway through? Will they pick up on the small details the show puts down? Will they have the patience to let the show develop its own identity or will they draw their own conclusions too early on? And this is where the Star Trek veterancy shines through. Right from the get-go, Brent and Jeff host the show with the confidence of experienced podcasters. Here are two guys who aren't afraid to be critical of the show they're watching, but they're also fans of a huge franchise that has had tons of ups, tons of downs, good episodes, and bad ones. And so they know where to find things to praise, what to criticize, and where to be patient with a show that has yet to find its footing. With, the, with most of the shows still ahead, and hours upon hours of discussion to come, this is a very promising start. There's nothing more to say, but live long and prosper. Because he buzzed himself, which is super cool. I love it when people buzz themselves. <laughs> it makes me giggle every time. <laughs> it's the best. Uh, okay, first of all, Babylon 5 RPGs? Yeah, I, did I not didn't know, know about that. Thing. Is that a thing? I mean, I obviously like it is, but... I feel like a, like a, maybe a Patreon special. Like maybe we get yeah. a little game going on Discord or something. Yeah. That is, be, that is dope. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> we, we, hey, um, we'll have to ask the discord folks over on page. Hey, by the way, if you guys want to come chat with, with Jeff and I, like on a messenger platform, we have a discord server that you guys can get access to over at our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Babylon five first, first, uh, the number five, the word first. That's right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you just gave it like the sexy that's right you went that's right that's right <laughs> yeah um 
but uh Babylon, but we'll have to ask because i don't want to spoil anything like if there if there's it may be one of those things we have to wait until we get through with this oh yeah uh, or do. or maybe they base the whole role the whole uh rpg on this episode we're going to talk about today mm. hey on that note brent we have another five star review oh yes this one's also on apple Podcasts, and jason ardren says i was a big fan of babylon 5 back in the day but haven't watched it in years then i discovered this podcast two trekkies watching babylon 5 for the first time Babylon 5 is a series that builds its stories, so you can't rewatch it without seeing parts of the story constantly building. So mm. it's refreshing hearing two people watch it for the first time, so they have no knowledge of what's to come. Their discussions are fascinating, fair, and entertaining. Whether you've never watched Babylon 5 before or it's your 47th time watching it, this podcast is the perfect companion. Uh, that deserves a buzz. It's 100% a Star Trek reference. It's a good one, too. It's a beam me up, a Star Trek podcast reference is what it, it is. It is. It is. That was that was fun. That was fun. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. That's uh, that's what we try to be. What cracks me up is when people don't get it. You know, and hey, shout out to everybody who's listening, whether you get it or not. Uh, but there's just, like, there's just some people who don't get that, like, we're going through for the first time. We don't see all the connections. Brett, how could you not know that this thing happens in 72 how, more episodes? How, how could you not, not understand that? that that's foreshadowing? You don't appreciate subtlety. Okay. Dude, I'm still trying to figure out the layout of the freaking station, and I'm a season and a half in. Like, I just learned Brown Sector is where the sewage goes. Like, come on, give me a break. <laughs> right? Oh. <laughs> uh. You, you see youtube this is the part where i don't i don't know how many of these jeff does and have given episodes so right. I, just I usually do nod. two i usually do two you do I, you, I do you two. yeah yeah sometimes yeah. you do two but i'm know. gonna i'm gonna tell you because i even told youtube earlier how i queue these up i think i'm gonna do three next week because we got a, a couple little ones so okay. sounds good i think but uh, maybe i should start saying that i should say like hey here's two that, that you can tell me before the show starts like i've got two today you know yeah, or three or whatever it. that probably wouldn't wouldn't be bad soft pitch um, a little for you i yeah. promise you i will forget this conversation by next week just just tell me you <laughs> you know uh anyway hey jeff you know what what's that well along with our rule of three which by the way the ones that that got buzzed earlier that's on them that's not on us uh, but along with our rule of three, there's another game that we like to play at the end of the show. I had so much fun with this game last week where we got to, uh, we got to guess what the next week's episode is going to be based on title alone. We don't watch ahead. We don't see, you know, we, we, we truly, there's the title. Here's what you think it's going to be. Sometimes it's spot on. Sometimes it has absolutely nothing to do with the episode. Jeff, do you remember what you said last week and how close were you? Well, we were both pretty close in what we guessed. And so let's just say off the bat, like, oh my gosh, King Arthur came back. We got that. Where I went uh, on a different route than you is I thought we were going to learn that Arthur was actually a Vorlon back in the day. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it, 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 one of those Vorlon interferences in our faith stuff or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I was not right about that at all, but mm -hmm. totally nailed the King Arthur part. What did you, uh, what did you guess? Yeah, I, I was very similar. I said, I said, King Arthur, I said Excalibur. So I got, I got that. Uh, but I said that they would arrive, that he would arrive from the Vorlons a la Jack the Ripper from comes the inquisitor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. that it would be like that. But I also said, this was going to be a palate cleanser. So this was going to be a comedy, right? This was going to be a good, like reset us after a bunch of heavy episodes and the last two episodes, which are like. That's what you're using to follow up with. Um, and, and, and I said that in doing so, like King Arthur would somehow be the guy who is the catalyst for the rest of the, like the universe, accepting Babylon five as its own state. It wasn't King Arthur that had anything to do with that, but I will go ahead and say, based on the treaties and stuff, people are acknowledging Babylon five as its own state. I'm satisfied with that requirement being filled. So everything else was wrong. Yeah, because you thought like Avalon was a Vorlon planet, and it was actually I, a really cool idea that you had. Well, the, they said it in the show. They even re they even referenced Jack the Ripper with comes the Inquisitor. Like, hey, it could be that. 
Turns out it wasn't. But yeah, Mar they said Marcus it in the was show. literally, you know what? Marcus says, I think Brent Allen guessed this is what was going to happen this episode. So I'm going to bring it up Jeff, just because maybe I, I am telling you, you and I 30 years later are impacting the writing of this show from 30 years into the past time travel, time loops, time is cyclical and spherical, not linear. Um, I'm tempted, but mm -hmm. I'm not going to, mm -mm. um, anyway, Jeff, for the folks at home who maybe didn't actually watch this episode before leading, listening to this episode. And honestly, I couldn't blame them. Uh, maybe it's been a while since they've seen it, anything like that. Uh, today, fortunately for me and unfortunately for you, the duty falls to remind us what this episode is while you do that. I'm going to check out for a while. Cause Oh, have fun, man. Hey, thanks. Well, Hey, Babylon five opened for business like two weeks ago, but nobody seems to care. Sheridan and Ivanova are trying to figure out how to get some more cash flowing through the station and to stop relying on the Minbari for protection. They pull the non-aligned worlds that will agree to meet into the council chambers and propose a new Babylon treaty. It declares Babylon five as neutral territory and calls on the league worlds to chip in on station defense. The treaty isn't celebrated, but it does go over better than a wet fart in church. Enough sign to ensure protection for the station. The one ship that did pay to dock dropped a dude off that caused quite a commotion when he came on board. Security stopped him after a weapons alert. He said that he had returned because he is needed at this place and at this time. And as much as I was hoping that he was going to be a techno mage, I was almost equally um, surprised surprised when he said he was King Arthur. Marcus though is eating this up. He's been preparing for this moment his entire life. Dr. Franklin insists on checking him out. He's not going to believe that he's really King Arthur and is going to science his way to the truth because Dr. Franklin is smarter than anyone else and is a master sciencer. In the meantime, Arthur is down below helping old ladies and fighting crime. You know who else is fighting crime down below? Jakar. They hook up and they kick some serious lurker butt. Jakar is living his best life. They go to the bar. They get wasted in sitting at a tiny, dark table. Arthur knights Jakar, and because of his eyes, christens him the Red Knight. Arthur tells the moving story of his defeat. He and Mordred met to negotiate a treaty. They each brought 14 knights with them, with their armies waiting in the distance prepared for shenanigans. The order was, if anyone draws their sword, charge in and bring hell with you. Well, as luck would have it, a snake, an adder, joins the negotiation. One of Mordred's, one of Mordred's knights draws their sword to kill the snake, bringing Arthur's, bringing Arthur's army in, and it was pandemonium and absolute slaughter. Remember how Franklin had to science his way to moral superiority? Well, he learned that this Arthur is actually a dude named David McIntyre, a decorated soldier from the Earth Minbari War, and not just a decorated soldier, but the gunner's mate who executed the order to fire on Ducat's Minbari ship. Yeah, he was on the Prometheus when it made first contact with the Minbari. They have a tradition of approaching ships with their gun ports open as a show of respect. Prometheus took that as a threat, had McIntyre fire and launched a one-sided war that almost eliminated humanity from the galaxy. Franklin all but physically attacks him with this information until he goes into a catatonic state. Marcus is able to decode the fantasy he was living in. McIntyre was Arthur. Franklin, for some reason, is Bedivere. Excalibur represents his pain that needs to be returned to the Lady of the Lake. But who is that? Who is the Lady? Oh, I see. It's Delenn. She comes in, takes Excalibur in a quiet and honestly moving scene. And McIntyre is back on his feet, ready to join the fight. Like, seriously, like that fast. He's headed to the Narn homeworld to help with the resistance. Marcus and Franklin see him off. And once he's on his way, Marcus speculates that Kosh must be Merlin, who aged backwards 
So Babylon 5 may have been the inspiration for the round table. Sheridan is Archer, Ivanova is Gawain, and, well, you know who would be Morgana. Um, actually, no, I, uh, I don't know who. Like, can you clue me in a little bit here? But hey, you know who else doesn't know? Garibaldi. And that's because he's busy breaking and entering the post office to get a package sent to him from Earth. Operating costs have gone up, so it's going to cost him 100 credits to get his anchovies and pepperoni. In the end, he threatens to shut down the post office and evict the postal worker so he can get his postage and his money back. Classy Garibaldi. Real classy. Brent, what did you think of this episode of Babylon 5? Not a lot. Um, we we finally learned what started the Earthman Bari War. That was pretty cool. It yeah. was a mistake. Mm -hmm. It was a mistake, and you maybe could have something to talk with about that, uh, Jeff. We did this episode already this season. Oh yeah, this was passing through guest enemy. You're talking about guilt and what that does to a person's psyche, and I understand this is different. What do you do with the guy who was the actual dude who pushed the bomb out of the hatch that dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki? That's the dude we're talking about in this episode, right? right? The pilot of Enola Gay flying out of the shockwave on yep. that August day. Yep. That's the, uh, that's the guy we're talking about. So I, I just, people out there are going to give me such flack for this episode. I, I have no notes. I literally have no notes. There's nothing about this episode that stood out to me that I want to talk about that. I have any desire to talk about. I don't know why we're doing this episode. Now people out there are going to be like, Oh, well, you know, you, you talking about this person here and this guilt and this look, mm -mm, I'm past this part. I'm past this part. Maybe on a rewatch. This is a cool deep dive. This is a cool, whatever. I think there's some cool, probably star Trek messages. I'm glad you've got deltas this week. I am so ready to move on to the next episode. And that is pretty much my complete thoughts people are gonna rip into me in the comments i don't even care because this was objectively uh, an awful episode how about you jeff wow. yeah you know, i think really this did one thing like this accomplished one thing for us and like the scope of babylon 5 the big mystery from episode one was you know what happened why did the earthman bari war end and how did it start and what did this happen i feel like we have a pretty i don't want to say complete picture but i can tell the story now you know mm -hmm. of how we started the war with them why they freaked out and how it ended so so that happened um i think every sci-fi show does this episode though like every sci-fi show has to have its fantasy episode and here's the thing they're never that good and this one is no no different michael mm -hmm. york was uh he tried actually you know what i have a little bit of trivia for you Okay. So, um, Michael Myers, right. The, the, not the killer, <laughs> but the actor, the comedian, he saw this episode. This is the episode that convinced him to cast Michael York into the role of Basil expedition, Basil exposition in the Austin power movies. Is it really? No, I actually made that up just so I had some, something interesting to say about the episode. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Listen, all you guys out there who just wrote this comment, Brent doesn't understand subtlety. There's 22 episodes in a season and you got to fill them all up. I want you to go in, click those little dots next to it and delete that comment. I understand. Jeff understands there are 22 episodes in a season. That's a long season. We also understand subtlety. If this episode is doing any kind of foreshadowing for something else later on, awesome. I ain't picking it up yet. And that's okay. But this episode is just bleh. <laughs> like it's just, it just like okay, we already did this episode. I'm so like yeah. Oh my well, god. Think, we just so, okay. did this episode. Let's let's just rip through it because I have a handful of little points on the Arthur stuff here. Yeah. And I think that one was, and you mentioned it, that like they brought up Sebastian and the comes the Inquisitor thing, right? Like, oh my yeah. gosh, you know, the Vorlons could have picked him up. How does Marcus know about that? That was a season two thing. I thought that was interesting that Marcus was the one to bring that up. They talk over lunch or dinner. Maybe. Know. 
I did love, but here, here's what makes the whole thing. Pillow, pillow talk between him and Ivanova. Yeah, it could be, could be that. Yeah. I think the two things though, that were cool. One was Delenn coming in to take Excalibur. Mm -hmm. It was silent. It was wordless. There was very little music to it. If I remember even just like a little bit of like mood music. And it was still so powerful. Just her eyes, you know, it was just one of those things of like, we're cool, man. We're cool. Mm -hmm. But the shining moment of this episode that was epic. And I will watch, I will watch this part of the episode again was Jakar leaping over the railing, going down into that pit and just being like, let's do this. Dude, look, okay. For a guy who is not actually King Arthur. And presumably not actually sword trained, although he might. That dude had some skills. Totally. Like he could have, he could legitimately fight and do his thing. And Jeff, here's the thing. You you just mentioned it. They said they called it out. Could be another guy from Vorlon that got taken off of Earth, which is what I said last week, right? Mm -hmm. They could have said that. This would have been so much better of an episode if that guy actually was the dude king arthur yeah and maybe a little less on the sir Gwen and lancelot and galahad and all that sort of stuff and just be like the king arthur guy who's come back maybe there's all that like this would have been so much better if it was that episode not what we got not it even it even dude, started out down that do right what? where he's like when marcus is like oh well, let's go let's go, i'll go grab galahad and lancelot and he's like whoa they're dead. No. And, that, and I'm thinking to myself, this is going to be great. Like he knows what's up. Yeah. You know, he's totally lucid. He understands yeah. the time and place he's in. This is going to be, oh, okay. So we're going to rehash the, uh, the long dark stuff with PTSD for soldiers, which is an important story to tell. Sure. It's a story they've told. It. We've already done yeah. it. We've done it. And also Jeff, all it showed me Jeff, again, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Never mind. You sure? I don't, I don't know if yeah, I don't know if you want to edit that part out or not either. <laughs> While you're editing, never mind. It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we get the episodes where I'm just like, oh man, this is gonna be. I was. Be it was. Fun. It was one of those like I was gonna say something, and then I was like, no, actually, I don't need to say that at all. No, That's okay. all. Yeah. That's all it was. Sorry, guys. I'm not telling you what it was. Brain oh, just edited himself. Sorry, I com I completely cut you off. I am so sorry. You did. I had a whole I had a whole great thing, and I probably ruined your whole train of thought. I'm so sorry. But what it really did, like for me, what it really did was showed me that Franklin. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! Not only is he all the things we've talked about so many times, but he's a bully. Yeah. Now you can sit there, you can make the point, and I know that there are people listening and watching right now who are going to say this of like, but he got him to understand who he was. Like he fixed him and it's better. You don't fix someone by like verbally beating them up. Yeah. That was even for 1996, that was wildly unprofessional of mm -hmm. Dr. Franklin. To, and just, just the witch hunt that he was after of just like, we're going to get this guy. We're going to tell him who he really is. It's like, God, dude, lay off. Just about six months ago, mm -hmm. six months ago, somebody made a comment about me and in, in total defense of them, they actually sent an email later apologizing for this, but they were like, Jeff just hates Franklin and he refuses to look at him in an unbiased way. I'm looking at him in an unbiased way and he's a terrible doctor and he's a terrible person. And this episode just proved it. Sorry who he is i don't know his arc i don't know how he develops maybe he ends up being mother Teresa. well i guess that's not the best thing depending on how you look at mother Teresa, gandhi whoever you know whoever we hold up as being a great person maybe he ends up being that person mm -hmm. at the end of the series we're not the end of the series yet mm -hmm. like right now dr franklin is the worst right all right is that enough about arthur i, I had I, I the whole thing with jakar could have really been something and as soon as soon as they made it about the the bomber dude, instead of let it actually being King Arthur from long ago, saved by the Vorlons, who has been brought back for just a time as this, if it would have been about that, all that Jakar stuff would have been dope. 
when they made it about the bomber, it negated everything. Everything. Gone. I'm done. Yeah, he's left holding the bag. Yeah. But you're I'm the I'm your red knight. Yep. And you're just gonna I mean no, he's gonna go not. help the Narns. That's cool, but you're still just your citizen Jakar. Yep. Still. Yeah. You played along with the dude who's had a psychotic break. And I in no way, shape, or form mean any kind of disrespect to anyone who's ever dealt with any kind of mental health issues. None whatsoever. Question. Yes. Are you satisfied with the Babylon treaty and how that went down? I, I'm fine. I, yeah. I, I didn't. I, that could, should have been a good episode. Trying to get the rest of the, the universe to acknowledge Babylon five to say, Hey, we're going to, we're going to do a brand new treaty and we're going to get people to sign on because to, to emphasize like this is going to be the last best hope for peace. This is still going to be neutral territory. This is still going to be a place where you send your ambassadors. In fact, not only is that, we're going to do it even better than we did before. We're going more hardcore at it, and Earth ain't here to stop us and tell us what to do. Oh, and by the way, we also need you guys to send us some money because we're severely lacking. Um, <laughs> you know, that would have been a good episode. That would have been very appropriate. random dude dealing with guilt like it's a topic mm -hmm. already done it how about you were you okay with it yeah i think so i think to your point i wish it was more about like they just threw out babylon 5 will be neutral territory where we can do these things but then all the emphasis was on and we need your ships to patrol like we really need like business and we need people helping out it was it was more of a like hands out we need something as opposed to we're amazing and we have something to offer you yeah. and i think that if it was given more than the what four and a half minutes that it got in this episode they could have gone there mm -hmm. It was a neat idea. I liked the production of it. Like it was cool to see the council chambers again. I liked that they had the treaties in those folders, you know, all official and Ivana was passing them through. Mm -hmm. Like the whole scene was good. I did notice it looked like Sheridan and Ivana had like sashes or something on over there, like some sort of a version of uh like for a, like a dress uniform sort of thing. I didn't even notice that at all. I it just made Look it just made me miss the Earth. <laughs> it just made me miss the Earth Force dress uniforms. Dude, those were such good uniforms. Yeah. They were, do you ever wonder if like Sheridan like just stands in his quarters and just looks into his closet and be like, "Man, I look so good in that." He it's totally like Silence of the Lambs, Buffalo Bills. It. He's just right. like, well, you know, he's also sitting there like, "Dude, I just bought this new dress uniform before I got here." Right. Like I, I got, just got, I got it. New patches sewn on. This stuff isn't cheap. But he puts it on in the mirror. He. He plays a little music and he goes, would, would, would you salute me? I'd salute me. <laughs> Sorry. That was a really bad. <laughs> if you get it, you get it. Uh, <laughs> hey, Jeff. Would. Yeah. Hey, Jeff. Um, let's actually talk substance here. Was hey. there any kind of good Star Trek messages you pulled out of this? You got deltas this week. We do. Let's hit one one other plot point before no, we I'm get done. to that. Nope. And then I'll cut you off. We gotta talk about the Garibaldi stuff. I don't care. Cut me off. Okay, fine. Let's talk about Garibaldi. I like Garibaldi. He's cool. I, I thought he was way out of line. Way out of line in this one. Um Okay. In prior Babylon five episodes, there has been a B plot that has been intended to be comedy. It has been intended to play for laughs. Yeah. And it was not funny looking at you acts of sacrifice where you tried to force Ivanova to have sex against her will. Yes. Right. Not funny. It was meant to be hilarious. Maybe it was really funny back in the nineties. I can't imagine that it was, it's not funny today. This one, a B plot that is being played for laughs and was funny. Garibaldi, try, like, I'm not taking any of that, not to, not to crap on your comment. I'm not taking any of it seriously because the post office guy was a cartoon. He was he great. Was I awesome. loved him. Garibaldi trying to break into his deal. <laughs> well, to me, everything was great till he whipped out the PPG and shot the lock, but it made it fine though. When the postal guy was living, in <laughs> living thing, in the postal right? thing, 20 extra credits for that lock. Right. 
And when he when he does the thing at the end where like he gives him the damaged box, he's like, yeah. I'm just joking. I'm like, look, I, I yes, in real life, was Garibaldi out of line? Sure. I'm not taking any of that seriously because it was it was funny. I loved the scene when they were breaking and entering and Garibaldi's like, dude, what like what are y'all worried about? What's the big deal? He's, he's like, dude, this is the post office. We could get in real trouble. <laughs> It was fun, but Brent, I think that we have reached that part of the show where we boil this all down. We see if the show has any of those star Trekkie type messages to it, like a deep moral message. Maybe it's holding up a mirror to society, giving us hope that we'll be better in the future. We're going to do that with me rating this episode on a scale of zero to five deltas as to how star Trekky it was. And I mean, we can go through the exercise of you rating it on a scale of zero to five star theories as to how much we liked it and how Babylon five it was, but I'm pretty sure we know. I think I'll we're contractually f- obligated to go through that exercise. I think so too. It's in the notes. Like we yeah. wrote it. So, yeah, but I'll start with the deltas. There was a cool scene in this one or they were talking about life being fair or not being fair. Life's so unfair. And Marcus said, I'm glad it's not fair, right? If it were fair, all the bad things that happened to us would be what we deserved. Now I could write a huge, excellent Star Trek episode, five Delta Star Trek episode on that message alone, that premise right there, a society, right? Built on this premise that, you know, of course, ultimately uses it for evil. You know, one group decides what, who does and who doesn't it'd be one of those things and they kind of break it down but it was literally a line that marcus said that was a cool thinking thing but it does take us back to a theme that we've talked about a lot and that is that we can only control like the only thing we as humans as people can control Mm -hmm. is how we react to things right Mm -hmm. you know a thing happens we get to choose how we react to it and that's it life's not fair but our reaction to the unfairness can be fair And I think that Arthur and McIntyre both are trying to make right what went wrong from a misunderstanding that happened, right? An unfair misunderstanding dude going after the adder and then the, uh, the, uh, the army's coming down and starting the, the, the fantasy war that happened. And then McIntyre shooting the Minbari ship ultimately leading to Dukat dying in the earth Minbari war. Mm -hmm. They couldn't stop the things that happened, right? Arthur couldn't have stopped the sword coming down on the snake. McIntyre couldn't have not shot the, the gun, the gunnery batteries at him, but they could try to make up for it or at least ask and try to make up for it and look for that forgiveness, which takes us again to the theme of forgiveness, which we are really, really hitting hard in season three. The attack on the Minbari ship wasn't McIntyre's responsibility, but he blamed himself. And I think this is a thing too we've seen in this se- in this season specifically a couple of times. He's not just blaming himself for firing on them, mm-hmm. but he's also blaming himself for surviving the Battle of the Line. But was like mm-hmm. twenty thousand people were at that, and two hundred survived. Is what we got out of this one. Mm-hmm. So in his own way, through his expression of his post-traumatic stress, he seeks out forgiveness from Delenn and he gets it. And to me, the frosting on this one is that he used his skills wherever he got those skills as Arthur. He immediately, immediately used them to help people. There's that scene with the old lady who just wanted her picture of her, of her husband who died. That's all that she wanted. And he went out of his way to make it happen. Like he naturally helped people. And immediately, as soon as he was like immediately recovered, like that fast from, you Mm -hmm. know, all that time of being sick, he goes off to help the Narns at great personal risk. I thought that was Mm -hmm. great. So with all of that said, I, I, I feel like this had some strong messages in it. And so I'm going to give it three deltas. Yeah. I, I, I remember watching this thing and like, oh yeah, that's the Star Trek. Yeah. That's there. Mm -hmm. This, I mean. I don't want to, as much as I'm crapping on this episode and I'm crapping all over this episode, I, I don't want to take away the Star Trek messages from it because it's definitely there. Mm-hmm. I'm just really glad you're the one who has to do it. <laughs> well, and I think, and I, can I said, they're not new messages. There's no new light being shined here. It's just yeah. like, Hey, here's the thing again that we've been telling you. They're great messages. It's great stuff, but we got it. it we look, generally it, got it better. Here's a, it, it, this may go over into the star fury conversation a bit. Okay. What do we know at this point? 
even if you're if you're watching this as it's airing live on television you know these stories are all running together this is a this is a big story that's going from one to the next to the next to the next like like you understand that midway through season three Mm -hmm. halfway through the run of the show which you didn't know that it was going to be the run of the show at the time maybe you heard rumblings out there of like yeah when he when he pitched the show to the network he said he had a five this is a five season show and he's got the whole thing already planned out like you know that if you didn't know that you figured it out you get to this episode and you're like you've got to be sitting like in the spot that you and i are sitting in right now jeff which is get get on with the thing like you had this awesome situation where babylon 5 broke away and it was like yeah let's go and the last what has it been jeff two three episodes now in a row have been like what are we doing like it's just it's just been heavy until you got to this one which was just bad i'm sorry him coming in and going Hey, I'm going to release my guilt back to the lady of the lake and Excalibur does that. Now I'm good. That's not how that works. Yeah, not at all. That was, it was so absurd that, again, I go back to, had he actually been a dude from, from the Vorlon? and come on to to facilitate something to do something maybe maybe the one who really needed him was jakar to come and knight him so jakar can rise up and stand up like maybe it's something honestly how cool would it be for them just to be kind of like a new cast member Mm -hmm. like a brother theo we see him four or five times a a season which by the way where's brother theo been i need that back you know what i mean um but that would have been cool. That's not what we got. Um, Star Furies is this weird mix of how much did we enjoy the episode versus how Babylon five, how much did it do it in Babylon five's own way? As you mentioned earlier, Jeff, this is an episode every Star Trek or every not Star Trek, every sci-fi show does. They do. They do the guilty conscience. They do the, the, this thing. Sometimes they do it more than once. You know what episode this reminded me of from Star Trek a lot? Hmm. Do you remember the episode of the little kid who lost his parents and he was trying to become like data with like no emotion Mm -hmm. that this one, I mean, obviously clearly different, but a a person who had a complete, who's having a complete break and identifying as something else uh, other than what they are and having to rediscover themselves. It's a beautiful story. This is not the time to tell the story. Mm -hmm. And I know people out there, they're, they're just cacking on that keyboard guys you can save it i'm not even gonna respond to those comments this week i'm just i'm maybe i will here's the deal if you write me those kind of comments if if you catch me in the right mood i might not be nice when i when i respond please understand that that's not anything personal it's just this episode um this didn't do it in a very babylon five way this was sloppy this was poorly written I don't know what the hell J- JMS was thinking about with this episode. This one is going to get like, just because the, the Garibaldi pot side made me laugh and the Jakar stuff made me like, I, I, I enjoyed that part. I'm not going to say that this was completely devoid of enjoyment. There's just not much to really grab onto at this point. That is, that is new. That's different. Mm-hmm. So I, I'll give it a star fury one. And that might fury. be, that might be generous. I was thinking a half. But I, I, I'm, I'll, no, I'm going to do half, half. Okay. That's where I am. It's a half a star fury. That's it. Half a star fury is exactly half a star fury more than I thought you were going to give it. Me too. To be honest with you. I just talked myself into half a star fury. Well, the Garibaldi stuff was fun for sure. Mm-hmm. And I also think as you were talking, it made me think of the geometry of shadows episode that mm-hmm. when we watched it, we were just kind of like, dude, techno mages are awesome. And then there was just like some other stuff that was kind of like, okay, like whatever. Here we are now more than a season after that episode. It's like, oh my God, what a rich episode that told us so much. I've heard so much about that. I need to go back and, well, I'm going to get it on Babylon 5 for the second time. Like that is an episode specifically because we got so rolled in the comments over that. You don't understand foreshadowing. Okay. Maybe they're foreshadowing. Do I remember what, what? people were talking about that episode at this point no 
when I go back and watch this for the second time, I can't, I can't, I'm looking forward to that particular episode. Uh, I, I will say this. The Mimbari after this episode to me, now that we know why the earth Mimbari war started and exactly how it happened, the Mimbari are becoming more and more Vulcan every passing episode. Agreed. And yes. not in a good way. No, all the, because, like the enterprise Vulcan stuff, really. Mm -hmm, right. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. With as enlightened and evolved as they would like us to believe, you're going to approach people with open ports, as is your custom. Cool, but you're going to be surprised when people take that take offense to that and fire on you. Like, really? Yeah. Really? And, and then and launch then you're a gonna, jihad. Yeah, really to the point where you're going to just obli oh you killed our guy so we're going to kill all of you yeah. you did this thing we're going to kill all of you like that is ridiculous and and earth you're weak you're small you're brand new to the universe you're this but we're going to just obliterate you and wipe you off the the universal map <sighs> yeah I, it's a loss of it's a the mimbari got notched down a peg for me Maybe two yeah. pegs after this I see episode. That. Yeah, because I think, yeah, I agree. And I think too with the Geometry of Shadows piece, one, we wanted the Techno Mages back. I still want the Techno Mages back. Me too. They gave us a lot of cool stuff. This episode, if Arthur came back, okay. I'd be Whatever. Mad. If he comes I, I, back. I'd be mad. Well, at this point, knowing what happened to McIntyre, it'd be ridiculous if he came back. But just if we carry through the theory that he was Arthur, and he went off to do stuff and he came back. Okay, whatever. Oh, yeah. Cool. I don't, yeah, I don't care. I will, mm -hmm. I will get on a soapbox and yell for the techno mages to come back. I don't care if Arthur comes back. Also the other stuff in this episode, maybe it's foreshadowing of some kind. If it is, don't tell us. Um, but I can't see it at all. What, what it means. No, mm -mm. But right now, we don't have to foreshadow. Right now, we get to call it exactly how it is because we are, just like last season, creating the absolute and definitive, 100% accurate, definitive ranking of this season of Babylon 5. I'm not even going to go through the top five, Brent. Where do you rank a late delivery from Avalon? You know what I really want to do is I want to make this like we did the, the long dark last season yeah. where I was like, I'm just going to put it at 22, even though we're only at like episode eight and it's uh -huh. just going to stay all the way down there. I'm not going to do that to this one, but this will go at the end. This will go at the bottom and I'll gladly watch it get pushed down further and further and further as the season goes. Fair enough. Um, I think you don't disagree with me. <laughs> yeah. If I did, it wouldn't matter. But, um, the only disagreement I would do is I'd say, just put it at 22 <laughs> to <laughs> save ourselves the time. <laughs> but Brent, these are some words I know you've been waiting to hear for almost, uh, the better part of a week now. Uh, mm. that's it for a late delivery from Avalon Thank next God. week. We're going to be watching the ship of tears for the first time. Now, that's the first time Brent has heard that title. All we know are the titles of the next episode. We don't look at pictures. We don't look at synopses, the little thumbnails or anything like that. And the fun game we love to play is guessing what the episode is going to be about based on the title alone. So Brent, what do you think Ship of Tears is going to be about? I don't even want to guess. I, this, that, that title sounds awful. That, I mean... Seriously, we came out of, uh, we, we came out of severed dreams, awesomeness to what, what, what have we had these last couple of weeks? We've had, um, point of no return. No, 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 no. Since severed dreams seek transit veer. Okay. That wasn't a bad episode. Not what I expected, but it wasn't a great episode. Just not a great, not, not a bad episode. Ceremonies of light and dark, which uh, yeah. I mean, a late delivery, like this feels like it's going to be another heavy, not, and I don't listen, I feel great. Just one stuff. That's funny. No, that's not it. I just like, I can do heavy, make it matter. And this does not feel like anything that is going to matter. This feels like yet another 
something that is uh, a ship of tears. Okay. This is a warship. This is the ship that it's the widow maker. It's the, that sort of a ship. It's the one that like kills everybody. This is the, the Minbari one, is. right? That was the, it got blown up, but was it the Trigati, I think it was called. The, yeah. The, back at the beginning of season two. Yeah. It's going to be something like that. And they're coming through. And I, I don't even know what happens. I, Jeff, I'm not looking forward to this one next week either, man. Oh, I don't think it's going to be good. I'm going to make a huge prediction. Don't. Well, okay. Well. I think, I think Ivanova is going to die. No, she's not. And I think that she is expecting to go to Stovacor, but she's going to end up in <laughs> Greythor instead. Oh, wait, that's Barge of the... <laughs> I was like, only if she comes back. Like, right? is she going to come back as like three-eyed raven in that dream? <laughs> Where's that dream sequence been? I want that dream sequence back. Yeah, you know, like from, uh, what was that? Sheridan meeting with the prophets here thing, man. It's that acts of... What was that one in? I remember the dream sequence. Oh, the... Psh, I don't know. I forget which uh, one, but yeah, like where, night. it was all. Yeah, night. the raven, mm -hmm. the crow, and the mm -hmm. the dove. Okay, so here's my real prediction. I actually wrote this down because I, I I think this is going to be a thing. See, this that's what that's what happens, folks. When you actually are the one who writes the notes and gets to see the thing, you get to think about it way beforehand. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Yeah, so I have a little more prep on mine. This is going to pick up with the Babylon Treaty stuff, and okay. Babylon Five is trying to relegitimize itself more with the non-aligned worlds. And so I think that one of the immediate things that's going to happen are refugees are going to start pouring in from the non-aligned world. So we're going to start seeing oh. more of the Pakmara. We're going to see more Drazi. We're going to see more of these other aliens around in that mm -hmm. what we saw from the Narns, you know, when they were, were fleeing areas. But I think there's going to be one ship and I think it's going to be a Drazi ship just because we see the Drazi make up quite a bit. But the captain of the ship, is going to be an actor that has his SAG card so he can actually talk right in the episode. And he's going to have like all these just beat up, you know, women and children and, you know, poets and blah, blah, blah. And he's going to become like the ship of tears, right? Like we have just, this is a, this is sad. This is sorrowful. Maybe you don't have enough room. Maybe you can't dock us. And he's going to become like the spokesperson to actually start negotiating for peace. Like, I don't know what other non-aligned worlds they're warring yeah. with, yeah. but he's going to be like, let's get in Babylon five and let's negotiate a treaty. So my people can get taken care of. Okay. See, that sounds like a heavy episode. Yeah. I'm totally down for that episode. I have, would have no problems that, but again, you're moving again, you're moving the ball down the field, you know, uh, you're, you're adding to the story, not just spinning in circles, you know, and that's, that's what I want, Jeff. That's what I want. I, I want. The ne just push the ball down the field. It could be a little, could be a lot, but like, like I will just say this, yeah. like careful what you wish for. Um, you, know, when we had those three messages from earth point of no return and severed dreams, like those were exciting. Those were fun, but we had episodes over two hours long here on YouTube. And, uh, cause there's so much to dive into. I don't know that I want like, this is what week 12. So I don't necessarily know if I want 10 weeks of that. So careful what you wish for. I will. I will take ten weeks of that quality of episode, though. Wow. Maybe That's not a lot. You, you, you and I can get better on the length. Uh, but I want the show. Like that's. The, I want the show to be that good. We've heard so much about how great this show is. To get a crappy episode like this one is feels almost like a betrayal to be honest with you wow well we're gonna find out next week if the betrayal ends or if it continues thank you all so much for joining us for this epic episode of babylon 5 for the first time and an episode of babylon 5 don't forget to subscribe or follow wherever you're listening to us and if you haven't already please leave us a rating and a review so i can read it right here on the podcast so brent until next time. Hey, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? Uh, can you see my little name tag right here in my window? I can. What's it say? Do better. That is not directed at you. That's directed to 30 years ago in the past at the people at, at Babylon 5. Do better. They need to do better. It's my first time. 
you just hit the music on that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, there's no, there's no nothing on that one. They do need to do this was. Oh my not, gosh. Not a good episode. Hey, you know what? Club 65. You guys are awesome. Jeff, this one's under an hour. Can I, yeah, it was, can I, I tell really you where I just lost? wanted an hour. I like, I wanted I, it under an hour. I was good with that. What now? I got to tell you where I lost my <laughs> on this episode. Okay. When he showed up and down below wearing like the chain mail outfit. Oh, yeah. everything. I'm just like, Oh my God, they're doing it. They're where doing it. Even get the chain mail. Yeah. Like in, in 200 years into the future or whatever, where, where do you, where would you go to get chain mail right now, Jeff, right now? A tobacco store. <laughs> <laughs> do they the sell that crap shop. on Amazon or something? Like they probably do, actually. Babazon. Babazon <laughs> is what they Babazon Prime. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Well, this hey, Club 65, weird. we are gonna end this prior to one hour. Yeah. Um, I did have a huge um I I swore and during this one, and I'm gonna edit that out. This uh, a rarity for YouTube where I actually do some editing in the episode, but I let Jeff, one you're fly. not supposed to edit these episodes, man. This I know, is, but this is the unedited. This is the bloopers, the outtakes, all of that stuff, man. Yeah, it is. But there are some things that are not, um, I was inappropriate. We are, we are still family friendly. We try yeah. to be family friendly. Yeah. I'm not going to put true. an NSFW tag on this. This is the thing. And, and I own that. So when you're like, well, how come they're saying it's like this and it's still only this much time. Cause I screwed up to a point where I needed to cut that out. Yeah, so it won't be that much time though. No, maybe like 30 seconds. But. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. All right. I, I didn't go on a tirade or anything. All right. I, I, I Club 65, like you guys are awesome. Drop the 65 down in the comments below so that we know where you're here. Uh, make sure you go over to uh, bitly.com forward slash B5 Club 65 and uh, pick up Club 65 gear. Mine now has pencils in it. I'm just really, why do I have pencils in this thing? Yeah, you shouldn't drink. This is my that. drinking cup. My kids. This is my kids. All right. We're getting out of here. See, Club 65. Adios.